Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Sashin Littlefeather? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the incident, and offer my analysis. Sashin Littlefeather was born in Salinas, California on November 14, 1946. At this time, her name was Marie Cruz. It's worth noting that some sources indicate her name was Maria Cruz. Sashin's mother, Geraldine Barnitz, and her father, Manuel Cruz, both worked as saddle makers. Sashin had two younger sisters. Her mother had been born in Santa Barbara, California, and was of French, German, and Dutch descent. Sashin's father was born in Oxnard, California, and was of Hispanic descent. His relatives were from Mexico. Sashin told people something different. She indicated that her father had white mountain Apache and Yaqui ancestry. Sashin's father died in 1966. Her mother died in 2009. Sashin graduated from high school in 1964 and attended various colleges. She moved to the San Francisco Bay Area in 1969 to pursue a modeling career. Around this time, Sashin started using the name Sashin Littlefeather. She claimed that she chose the name Sashin because her father used to call her by that name. She selected the name Littlefeather because she always had a feather in her hair. Sashin was able to stay busy with acting. She was in several television and radio commercials. She participated in beauty pageants, worked at a radio station, did freelance reporting, was a professional model, and did a photo shoot for Playboy magazine. The feature was canceled. However, the photographs would be released later after she became well known, which brings me to the timeline of the incident. At some point, Sashin became friends with the famous actor Marlon Brando. It's not clear how they met. In one story, Sashin indicated that she sent him a letter asking about his interest in Native American issues. A few months later, he called her at the radio station where she worked. In another story, they met in Washington, D.C. In 1972, the movie The Godfather was released. It was well-received and is considered one of the greatest movies of all time. Marlon Brando was nominated for Best Actor at the 45th Academy Awards for his role as the character Vito Corleone. The awards were presented on March 27, 1973 in Los Angeles, California. Marlon Brando was the clear favorite to win the Oscar, and he was aware of this. He decided to boycott the ceremony because he was not pleased with how Native Americans were represented in American films. He notified Sashin of his plan and authorized her to represent him at the awards. Marlon Brando gave her a speech to read at the podium. The actor Roger Moore and the actress Liv Ullman presented the award for Best Actor. Not surprisingly, Marlon Brando was declared the winner. Sashin walked on stage wearing a beaded buckskin dress. As Roger Moore handed her the Oscar, she raised her hand. Normally, when this happens at the Academy Awards, the presenter gets slapped. But back in 1973, things were different. Sashin was simply indicating that she was declining the award. At this point, she presented a speech that was shorter than the one Marlon Brando prepared. She said that she was Apache and president of the National Native American Affirmative Image Committee. She was representing Marlon Brando. He had prepared a long speech, but she didn't have time to present it. Marlon Brando could not accept the award because of how Native Americans are treated in the film industry. Sashin's speech was met by mixed reactions from the crowd. Both applause and booing could be heard. Based on future events, she would have received only applause if she had slapped Roger Moore. Members of the Academy were not too happy. After the ceremony, no more representatives were allowed. Only the person who actually won the award could come on stage. Sashin continued with her career and had limited success. A few years after the Academy Awards incident, she indicated it had little effect on her career. Later, she claimed that she was threatened and shut out of Hollywood. 
She complained that the media released articles saying that she was not Native American, which of course was actually true. She was not Native American. Sashin became an inspiration to other actors interested in the topic of diversity and how groups are represented in Hollywood. For example, Jada Pinkett Smith boycotted the Academy Awards in 2016, saying that she was inspired by Sashin Littlefeather. In addition to acting, Sashin spent much of her career advocating for Native Americans. In June 2022, the Academy reversed its position and sent Sashin an apology. The Academy claimed the way she was treated was unjustified and unwarranted. The damage to her career was irreparable. Her courage had been unacknowledged. They offered their sincere admiration. Sashin received the apology graciously, saying it was a dream come true. On October 2, 2022, Sashin Littlefeather died from cancer. She was 75 years old. Now moving to my analysis. After Sashin's death, a Native American writer and activist named Jacqueline Keeler interviewed Sashin's two sisters, who revealed that Sashin was not Native American. They suggested Sashin pretended to have Native American heritage because she believed it was more prestigious than being Hispanic. Jacqueline explored Sashin's claim of Native American ancestry beyond interviewing her two sisters. She reviewed the family tree of Sashin's father and found no connection between his family and any Native American nations in the United States. Jacqueline went back to 1850 and found that the Cruz family was connected to a village that is now part of Mexico City. Manuel Cruz's ancestors came to the United States sometime around 1880. They identified as white, Caucasian, and Mexican in various legal documents. All of the people who they married also identified the same way. None of them identified as Native American. It appears as though Sashin Littlefeather came up with her first name from a company that manufactured spools of thread and ribbon. She came in contact with these products because she used them to make her own clothing when she was young. The name of the company was Sashin Ribbon Company, S-A-S-H-E-E-N, just one letter different than the name she used. Looking at Sashin's desperate desire to seek attention, it is reasonable to believe she pretended to be Native American to advance her modeling and acting career. It appears as though Sashin lied about a number of issues, not just her ancestry. Here are four examples. Number one, Sashin claimed that her father mistreated her and had difficulty regulating his intake of alcohol, but according to her sisters, this sounded a lot more like their grandfather. In an effort to be the victim, Sashin used her grandfather's behavior and said that is how her father acted. Number two, Sashin claimed that she grew up in a shack that did not have a toilet, when in fact she grew up in a house which was equipped with a toilet. Number three, in 1990, it was reported that Sashin's brother died of AIDS, which was a little confusing considering that she did not have a brother. Number four, in 1991, Sashin claimed that she was working on two shows for PBS, which were supposed to be broadcast in 1992. Neither show was ever broadcast. It's not clear if the shows ever existed. During her life, Sashin's impersonation led her to being honored as a legend. She was held out as an inspiration to millions, an individual with a calm dignity, a courageous warrior fighting for the rights of her people. Most people simply took her at her word, but not everybody did. For example, film critic Roger Ebert wrote a blog post about Marlon Brando in 2004. When talking about how Marlon Brando would be remembered for the Academy Awards incident, Roger said, quote, that little feather was later identified as Maria Cruz, an actress who is not Indian, only compounded his notoriety. He called her Maria. Other reports indicated her name was Marie, as I mentioned earlier. I find it curious that Roger posted this, yet no one else seemed to care. People just kept on believing her lie. Moving to the next question, what do I think happened in the case of Sashin Littlefeather? This is just a theory, my opinion. Growing up, Sashin developed characteristics of narcissism. She became grandiose, self-centered, had a sense of entitlement, and believed that she was special. 
She may have also had various histrionic characteristics, like attention-seeking. For example, she was very interested in modeling and acting. Sashin believed that she deserved to be famous, even though there was not much reason to believe this would happen. Frustrated by her inability to become famous, she started to blame her Mexican heritage. In her mind, that's why she was not successful. Sashin was determined to find a way to discard being Mexican. Therefore, she came up with the idea of pretending to be Native American. This not only erased the Mexican component, it allowed her to identify with a group that was in the news at the time for being victimized. Sashin came up with a way to play the ultimate victim. Right after her father died, and therefore was no longer around to challenge her story, she started identifying as Native American. She used her power of manipulation on Marlon Brando and was able to achieve notoriety, which would later convert to some degree of fame. The initial acrimonious response from the Academy only worked in her favor. It allowed her to play the victim even more. Throughout her life, Sashin was determined to live the fantasy she created and was never going to back down. After becoming more confident in her deception, she started adding more lies to the mix. She felt invincible. Some people might argue that Sashin was transracial, which is an ideology famously promoted by Rachel Dolezal. Rachel is a white woman who claimed to be black. There is a difference between these two stories. Rachel eventually admitted that both her parents were white, whereas Sashin falsely maintained her father was Native American. Sashin was not simply saying that she felt like she was Native American. She claimed that she actually was Native American, even after being challenged. Now moving to my final thoughts. There will always be individuals who are so desperate to be thought of as a victim, they will do just about anything, including falsely claiming membership to a group of people who have been the target of discrimination and other offenses. Sashin Littlefeather lived a lie in order to live as a victim. In her mind, it was a good trade-off. Throughout her career, some people doubted her acting skill, but in the end, I guess she was a good actress, after all. Those are my thoughts in the case of Sashin Littlefeather. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.